Okay, the recording is going. Welcome everybody to today's webinar. Uh, this webinar is uh, part of a series brought to you by uh, NVL, which is a Nordic uh, association for adult education. And uh, we've been having a sort of a theme about digital democracy and digital inclusion over the last uh, month or two. And in this session, we're going to be looking at digital democracy in action with some uh, interesting case studies from two continents. My name is Alistair Creelman. I'm uh, the rep Swedish representative in a little group called NVL Distance, which looks, uh, of course, at distance education and uh, adult education in one. And um, yeah, it's my pleasure really to introduce uh, the people around me and I'll be sort of retiring into the chat after introducing this basically. So I just need to hand over to my colleagues uh, who are in various locations. We've got David Ruffler and uh, Jochen Höferer in Salzburg, Austria, and we've got Garth Frizzell in uh, Canada, in British Columbia. So uh, I'll leave it over to David and uh, off you go. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, Alistair, for the introduction and especially for the invitation. I, I'm, I'm very, very glad about that and, and especially glad that uh, Gav and Jochen are joining us. And, and for Gav, it's, it's very early in the morning, just six o'clock, so that's really, <laughs> uh, really fine. Yeah, as um, Alastair asked me uh, to, to moderate this webinar, I, I thought about um, yeah, a specific topic. And, and as we are now in a, in a live session, and I, I really like live sessions, I, I thought it might be interesting to talk about live participation. So how can, how can these tools be used in political processes uh, for, for live interaction, for transparency, uh, and for participation? And, and I've prepared a, a very uh, small, uh, just yeah, about 10 slides, but mostly pictures as an introduction of what I'm doing and experiencing. And, and after that, I would like to ask uh, Jochen for his experiences and, and then Gav. And, and yeah, please, uh, I think everybody's free to, to comment and to, yeah, I think the aim is uh, to, to, to think beyond uh, our current activities. Uh, we, we, are, we are now, now showing you and, and we would like to discuss these um, aspects. So, so let me start live participation in politics. So that's me living in Salzburg, Austria, a university lecturer, adult educator, and much more. But I'm, I'm very interested in, in politics and and how to use uh, online media for participation. And I think it's so interesting to, to see how the media landscape changed. You all uh, know this uh, telephone. Uh, we were, uh, yeah, I, I grew up with this kind of television and it was one too many and okay, kind of participation as, as we could discuss what, what's happening. Uh, not online, but uh, on television, and 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 right now, uh, you see everybody can can be on television like like we are now, and we can be connected and, and talk to each other. And I think this this can have a, a real political impact. Uh, and and as we see that uh, technology uh, proceeds, yeah, now with with Google Glass, I, I wonder what Google Glass uh, could. Change maybe on, on how we uh, uh, are communicating, and I think this is a good a good example how how large a camera uh, still is, and and how it it is uh, now small in, in such a device. Uh, so maybe really this I, I think might be true of the people formerly known as the audience, because ev everybody can 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 be now a producer of. of of content and, and can interact. Yeah, and, and so that's uh, what Jochen uh, does in the city of Salzburg. Uh, we together implemented this, this format, uh, live broadcast of the Salzburg City Council with some kind of interaction. And, and I, I just would, would like to ask Gav, what about interaction? I, I know that the City Council meetings in, in Prince George uh, 
broadcast live, but but is there any interaction possible during during the meetings? Not the online. No. Not online. Okay. No. So, at at least the audience, the spectators, uh, are able to to talk to each other, and it's possible to to have it uh, with a mobile device as well. And that's what I've done for, for the Greens, to, to have an interactive chat with politicians, but we will learn more about uh, the experiences from GAF, a little bit later. And, and that was an interesting thing I've, I've done yesterday evening. It was for the NEOS, a new party in Austria, and, and they, they really focus on, on transparency and participation. And, and this was, so this is usually an internal meeting, but, but as participation and transpa transparency is such an important issue for them, uh, they, they really started, or want to start to, to have uh, on-site meetings uh, broadcast uh, live with the possibility of external participation. And, and there they talked about the, the task forces for different topics. So you can see here, these are the people on site and, and here are online participants. Yeah, and that is what GAF <laughs> is, is doing with, with Google Hangout. And yeah, but he will tell us more about that. And, and, and what I'm really eager to, to buy <laughs> uh, is, is such a device. This is a robot. And yeah, I would like to, to know from, from you as well, what, what do you think, maybe I can ask already the participants, what do you think, uh, would it make sense to use such a robot maybe in political processes? Because such a robot can represent a real person in, in an on-site meeting. Yeah, because with this robot I can, I can move, I can look at somebody, I can move forward to somebody, talk to him or her. <laughs> what do you think, maybe some um, I'm, I would like to, to, to have your remarks in, in the chat concerning this device. Yeah, this is how it would look like. Okay, so this this is maybe the more or less the, the, the frame uh, for for the next fifty minutes. Yeah, please feel free to comment or, or ask, ask questions. And now I would like to invite Jochen to present. He is employed at the city of Salzburg and his responsibility is, but he can explain more in detail, um, participation and transparency for the city of Salzburg. In Austria. Okay, so Jochen, the floor is yours. <laughs> and I will. <coughs> Hello to everybody. I'm waiting for my presentation. One moment. Introduce yourself. And... Yeah. My name is Jochen Höfferer. I work for the city government of Salzburg. Uh, since May 2013, I'm have been responsible for the branch social media and open government. We call the project or the initiative uh, Salzburg macht auf. In English, it's uh, Open Salzburg. Uh, and sorry, my English is not as good as I, I would like. Although I've been married to an English teacher for nine years, so it's I have a little bit um, understanding from my bad English, please. Uh, Yeah, um, just let me introduce uh, very shortly the city of Salzburg is the capital of the province of Salzburg, mostly known as birthplace of the famous composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart uh, and the Sound of Music Festival, uh, the Salzburg Festival, which has taken place in July since August 1920. It's a very old-fashioned town. Uh, and of course, it's known for the headquarters of Red Bull, 
is, is uh, located near the town. We have about 150,000 inhabitants, and Salzburg is the only fourth largest city in Austria, comparing to, for example, to Vienna or Graz or Linz. And you see the the river of Salz, uh, Salzburg is called Salzach. As you know, it's all about salt in 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 Austria. The closest Alpine Alpine peak is about uh, 1,900 meters high. It's called Untersberg, and it's less than 16 kil uh, kilometers away. Uh, and the old town is dominated by its baroque towers, churches, and the massive uh, massi fortress middle in the Salzburg. Uh, it's called Hohen Salzburg. And the area is surrounded by two smaller mountains, the mountain Kapuzinerberg and the mountain Mönchsberg. Uh, both offering a green relief, relief within the city of Salzburg. Uh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Only one picture. Uh, these are Rome uh, 2005 and Rome 2013. Uh, Habimus Papam Papa. Uh, the first is Benedict, and uh, the second is uh, Pope Franciscus. And you see that the world has changed during this uh, these eight years, and it's a, a life event. You take photos, you tweet, you uh, uh, update your status, uh, and um, the internet was all, uh, was always a social network. With Skype, uh, you you um, you have to. Uh, you have to communicate with lots of people. You have to show that you are in, in, in town. You have to show that you are in, in, in place where the, uh, where the Pope is, is presented. And uh, these, have, these, these are things that uh, should, uh, should change the policy and the politics here in Austria. And we try it um, in, in Salzburg. With, it's called in the project uh, uh, Open Salzburg. And you see here, I think it's a coffee shop here in, in, in San Francisco. Everybody is communicating but uh, not speaking together. It's not bad. It's not good. It's a new way that the people communicate. And uh, it's mainly based on re relationship, especially in social networks. Uh, and for young boys and girls, uh, the Web 2.0 is not a virt virtual cyberspace. It's a natural part of their everyday lives and therefore becomes real. And we do the live stream of our meetings of the city council Uh, David showed you uh, another screenshot we are taking or we are using uh, Adobe Connect uh, where uh, the people are uh, that's it's well, one member of the City Council. Uh, it's called Cla uh, she's called Claudia Schmidt, uh, and the people are talking, discussion, discussing the um, the points of the of the of the meetings, and we have uh, we do this since December 2011. We have more than two years with a slim technical equipment, and all council meetings. There's one per month. Is transmitted live into the World Wide Web. We had about several thousand viewers, uh, or they used this service. Uh, we broadcast the meetings, uh, and participants can ask questions, make their comments, uh, or have uh, w what they have to say. And we try to answer the questions in real time. Somebody, the mayor, has to ask some, sometimes the, the, the other members of the city council, or experts uh, from the uh, uh, Department of Finance or Department of Culture uh, um, uh, answering the questions of the, uh, of the people uh, during the live stream. And um, we, the plans for the future are to, to hope the, the interactive part between the politicians and, and the people is quite more uh, quite uh, opened up. Uh, we, we think about asking questions directly, 
uh, after the meeting like an, an interview, not uh, a chat, but like an interview with, with a TV station. Um, we, you see we have the, uh, on the right, uh, right upper side, you see uh, the documents uh, uh, are um, live to, uh, in, the, in the system, so people can look up uh, the things um, what is the city council discussing uh, actually already or uh, in, in this in this moment so they ha can have a background check about the the things they are talking about so we are very proud to to have these this uh, live stream for more than two years uh, now for the next slide I have um, one project was discovered uh, after this is it's called uh, open a household that means open budgets uh, at uh, at uh, www uh, open a household dot at uh, you can look up the the, uh, the open budget uh, from the city uh, city of Salzburg uh, to it's uh, back to 2001 up to t now 2012. In the next days, there will be 2013. The portal also includes interactive visualizations uh, of the uh, of the budget of uh, the city of Salzburg. Um, the, the portal features uh, visual visualizations in the form of a tree map. Tree map spending data according to political uh, classifications, uh, visualizations of the corresponding economic classifications, uh, what are the types of, of expensive, and you can look at it in real time. No. But uh, we have visualizations of spending of 1,000 euros of tax money, uh, and this, uh, this is one other project uh, with the live stream we are Actually, a little bit proud of, and one other is the free Wi-Fi. It's called. It wasn't. It's. it's uh, we have about. Uh, uh, it's called Salzburg Surf. That means free Wi-Fi Salzburg, with uh, about 30 uh, free Wi-Fi spots in in the in the uh, city of Salzburg. We are the leader in Austria. Um, where you can able to connect quickly and with, uh, without much effort with the WW or with the internet, and we have about 15, uh, 15 to 20 thousand users per month. Uh, and this year the expansion is continuing. And what we are doing in in 2014 is the next slide. Uh, it's we want to show. In, in real time uh, or in life politics, the uh, the policy circle or the politics circle of where uh, in, in Austria or in Salzburg it's called Amtsbericht, they can look up the the, the developing political themes from uh, one project, uh, school building, or so. What's going to through these marks of of, of uh, uh, the city council, because the, the the live stream of the the city council is only the last step. Uh, you see a lot of steps before, and we want to show this 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 process very transparent and very uh, easy to 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 see uh, with live streams or with uh, videos and 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 uh, with with. Uh, uh, where you can download the the, the recording afterwards, and uh, this is a very very inter interesting project for us because um, uh, as a city of transparency and uh, digital dialogue in comparison, uh, or is our leading field, so we have to encounter uh, borders. For example, one. Uh, the legal rules, uh, or the legal rules, are often behind the technolo uh, technology or the technological and social development in the field of the internet. 
especially the fine line between privacy and transparency. Uh, so we must be persuade more and more in the digital world, and it's up to our federal uh, legislature to conduct this debate in society and to adopt uh, the old and strong regulations because uh, when we do the live stream and talking about uh, a project and there is uh, called one name of a participant, we are, uh, um, we are cr crossing the boundaries of uh, data security. In Austria it's called Datenschutz, it's spelled in English. I don't know. And, uh, yeah, data, uh, data protection. So this is a, a very interesting problem uh, for for the city council, for the city uh, polit politicians, and we have to discuss it with the federal government because we have to to change our uh, our uh, our uh, rules or our uh, laws for. Uh, for talking in the policy circle or in the meetings of the city council. And <laughs> uh, Jean-Luc Picard said it, it's our mission to go forward. Uh, and this process has just begun, so it's interesting to to talk with, with the old uh, older politi uh, politician polit Ah, the older uh, people in the in the city council, uh, because this is a, is a new form of transparency, a new form of, of uh, how people can participate, uh, because they are used to it that people come to the the real uh, city council meetings and they talk in real life, but. They are not uh, used to it that people can ask questions uh, through the internet, can chat with them, can uh, blog with or uh, tweet, uh, and these are uh, questions like uh, 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 in the real world. So it's it's interesting how the the old people react uh, and, and how to. To, to gathering these new new steps. This was a very short and briefly look about uh, the live streaming and other small other projects we are doing here in Salzburg. Are there any questions in the chat I have to look about? Yeah, I think some some remarks, but but I would like yeah. to discuss them later. <coughs> Thank you uh, for now, uh, Jochen. I, I would like to hand over to, to Gaff and, and would like to really have a short overview about um, yeah, measures uh, concerning transparency, participation, and, and especially I, I would like to, to learn more about his uh, live video conferences. And, oh, thank, yeah. thank you Thank you very Gaff. much, David, and thank you, Jochen. I, uh, I'm very much enjoying the presentations. I don't have a PowerPoint to display, but I'd, I would like to take up on some of the points that have already been raised. On Monday, this, this current week, Monday night, we had a presentation at my city council. I'm an elected city councillor in the city of Prince George. It's a city of 75,000 in the center of British Columbia. British Columbia as a province is about the size of uh, Sweden, Finland, and Austria. Um, in my region, uh, we're the largest city in the area, uh, but we're 75,000 people in a vast area, about 800 kilometers to the nearest large city, uh, to the northeast, to the southwest, or to the southeast. So on Monday night, we had a proposal from city staff that would change the budget, uh, the amounts that we give to our symphony orchestra, the amount we give to our community arts council, and to our local uh, live theater, Theater Northwest. The proposal w was given to us on a digital format. That's how councillors receive our information last Wednesday night. And on Thursday, uh, the theater saw a copy of it on the website, sent it to their members. Then on Friday and Saturday, they were shared with the symphony. And by Monday morning, 
we started receiving emails from supporters of the symphony. The proposal was to reduce the budget that we were giving to the symphony gradually over the next three years, but it would be a, a sharp de decline in the amount of grant they would receive. So supporters of the symphony started emailing and they continued emailing. And then I started getting messages on Facebook as well. And I ultimately, our decision that night was not to change the funding. All nine of us on our city council received this kind of advocacy from the symphony supporters. And in addition to that, members of the symphony showed up live in our council chambers to watch and to, to show us that there was great interest. The, the results were that we didn't change the budget, but more interestingly, it was such a difference from what might have happened 50 years ago. We certainly wouldn't have seen that kind of immediate response to a proposed change. Really, five days that we had to consider this piece of policy and they were able to raise a tremendous amount of interest in a community of 75,000. That, that speaks to the strength of what we're working on here. In my role, I sit as city councillor and I've uh, been very interested in seeing how we could get more citizen engagement. I've only been on council, this is my second term, so five years. And uh, I was informative that in our first year, we put forward a resolution that allowed councillors to participate by telephone. Before that, the only way you could participate was in person live. So we've come a long ways. We've come to the point where our city council is broadcast live over the internet. And then within a day or two, it's broken out by agenda topic and the videos are archived onto the city website so we can watch how the council meetings went. But on those first few days when I was getting into city council, I was told by, by a uh, respected uh, city elder that now the voting was done and that was the last time I had to listen to citizens again until the next election because citizen participation only means going down to vote. And I thought, well, that's an interesting perspective, but it certainly isn't the perspective that we, uh, that I embrace. Uh, it's very different from what I want to see as well. So we'll contrast that with what we did last year. Uh, last year I connected with a, <coughs> with a colleague in San Diego and a friend down 800 kilometers away in Victoria and we launched a program called Bringing Canadians Together. The idea of it was to use a new technology, and then it was uh, Google Hangouts, to connect with Canadians all across the country and talk about issues that were interesting. So for, inter for, for example, we wanted to talk about the infrastructure crisis. In Canada right now, we're, we've got a $233 billion debt for roads, water, and sewer that needs to be upgraded at, in municipal governments. It's a, it's a significant issue because the taxation system simply can't afford to do those changes. So we wanted to talk about what that meant to people. I, I talk on a regular basis with colleagues across the country who are city councillors or mayors in different cities in Canada about these types of issues. But what did it mean to citizen who was going to be paying for these bills or citizen who was going to be drinking the water or seeing a bridge fall down or a, a sewer break open. And it was fascinating. Uh, it was fascinating because the issues contrasted from what we might have expected. Uh, we talked to a person who logged on online from a rural area of northern Alberta and a person from downtown Winnipeg and another person who was in Victoria, another in Montreal, and each one of them all across this vast country brought in different perspectives. That was nice. That was nice to get those perspectives and to bring them into my debates in city council, make them personal to Prince George. But what we did next was, was a lot of fun. We, the next part we did was we involved politicians at other levels of government. So we, we brought in uh, MPs, the uh, legislators at the national level, and we had them take part as well. 
it was uh, it was interesting because the issues changed and the people who participated changed and we had to moderate a little bit to make sure there wasn't uh, there wasn't partisan shots so people who were there on behalf of parties to try to change where the discussion was going we find that uh, uh, just a little overview of, of why I want to do this we find that in Canada the number of people who come out to vote in elections and who get engaged has been going down uh, what we see is that the national level is the the least engaged, the provincial, the next least engaged, but people get very engaged in the level of local governments. And that may be because they have a clear picture on a day-to-day -day basis of what a local government does, the trash removal, the police, the fire, roads, water. Maybe that's why uh, people get more engaged. Maybe it's because they see those politicians in the streets or shopping or, or in this morning before I came to this presentation, I was, uh, I'd usually be uh, delivering this, the newspaper with my son in the morning. So you see those politicians and maybe that's the reason there's a deeper connection. But what we have with this fantastic technology we're using even right now is an opportunity to connect visually, to connect anytime, to connect with a variety of different formats. And that's where the strength is. So how do we use it? And there's the question. Because uh, let me give an example, uh, David and Jochen. Uh, in, in my province, the electricity is all operated by a provincial authority, BC Hydro. So BC Hydro owns all of the streetlight poles. Now a group of local governments on an island in the Northwest wanted to get together and change out all the street lights to LED to make it uh, cheaper and to make it more environmentally friendly. But a provincial policy prohibited local governments from putting their lights onto the provincially owned poles. And that's a policy. So how do you change that? Well, the local government doesn't have the authority to. And how do you develop that policy? Well, what you do is, in our case, we get groups of cities that work together, take a policy, band together, and present it as a group to the government. When you have one citizen saying, I want change at the provincial level, it's very hard to do. But when you have a group of, in our case, 90 local governments who are getting together to say that the province must make a change, the, gov the province responds. What I see as a strength of, of online engagement is it's a way to get groups of citizens together to hone an idea, to clarify an idea, to get on the same page and then be able to say, look, there are a group of not just five of us or a hundred of us, but we represent 2,000 people and we want the policy changed. When you can aggregate groups like that, then this becomes a very, very valuable tool. So with bringing Canadians together, we've closed that project for now. But what we saw was people really wanted to get involved. People had opinions that they wanted to share. And it was a good way to get a, a straw poll, an informal way of, of getting feedback on what policy looked like. So thank you, and I, I look forward to our discussion. Yeah, yeah thank you, Gaff. Um, I, I would like to, to take up some of the questions uh, from the chat, uh, uh, especially uh, Johanny. Uh, she, she wrote uh, that uh, we are given just spectator seats. Um, so these systems might give a feeling of participation rather than uh, creating real dialogue. Maybe, maybe Johanny, would you like to uh, talk to us about that and elaborate uh, a bit? I will give you microphone rights. I could maybe um, <clears throat> just break in here a little bit to explain that the reason that you don't have microphone and video rights is uh, 
simply that um, you need to have a head, your headset properly installed and so on. And we have experience that uh, very often people don't have a headset or they don't have the right microphone and it causes echo and uh, other strange technical uh, noises. So that uh, but if you have a headset installed and your microphone is up and running, then uh, I think Halima would like to speak. So, but uh, Johanny is also no headset from Johanny, so he'll just he'll just have to chat. It would be interesting to know the answer to the questions there about the um, per real participation. Sorry, David. Yeah. Uh, any any further questions? Just just use the chat. Or just raise your hand. There was one question, for example, uh, regarding. Uh, yeah, how how do they take up the the new? Uh, this was concerning Salzburg. Christine asked, uh, how do citizens how do citizens uh, like the new uh, forms of transparency? How do they react? <laughs> Very positive. It's uh, it's the best program ever of the city of Salzburg. No, it's a uh, it's a technic avant-garde program until now. Uh, but uh, during one meeting of the city council there on Wednesday at nine o'clock in the morning, uh, in real in the in the real room there are about ten to thirty visitors and thirty days one uh, school class uh, uh, and in the internet or in the in the live stream we have about during the, the the meeting about 200 and 500 visitors only perhaps only for a few minutes and perhaps a lot of employees of the city of Salzburg we are 3000 3, uh, people uh, working for the city council uh, but they have to know what the uh, the board the member of the board uh, uh, discuss what their uh, um, what they are doing, so it's okay when they are listening to the the, the city council. And one, uh, it's it's only the first step. Uh, on on March of, of uh, the ninth ninth of March, we have the uh, the election day for the city council, and we are streaming the uh, the election results in in real time uh, when the polls close. And it's a new feature, so you you don't have to look. Uh, uh, the TV station, or to to uh, uh, you don't have to to hear the radio, and you can ask questions. You can ask the mayor, "What uh, are you saying to the uh, to the election result?" And there is no journalist who is asking the questions. You can ask your question, and and w we are trying to to get the answers in in real time. It's a crazy day. Election day is always crazy day, and uh, we it's a new experience for us, but the new experience for the uh, for the people or for the inhabitants of Salzburg, and there's one difference between Canada or I think Sweden or uh, in summer I was in Helsinki. Uh, we are a small town with no uh, with small distances. So uh, with the bike, uh, you are about uh, through the whole city. There, you're in 30 minutes from the other uh, from the one end to the other. So uh, internet live streaming is not uh, uh, to to for for long distance views, uh, but uh, I, I already said the city council uh, is meeting on always on Wednesday at nine o'clock, and uh, I think ninety percent of the people are in in work or in in, uh, in perhaps in school, uh, and so they can. Uh, have a look live, or we are uh, we are uh, we are recording the meetings, and a few days later you can look at on YouTube. It's not a, a funny video, but you can look up uh, your inter your special theme. So uh, when you're interested in culture, or when you're interested in integration, and you know the city council has had talked about this this topic, so. You can look up what the people say, and it's uh, it's very interesting how the the members of the city council uh, reacted when we had the first live streamings. The the discussion was better. It was not uh, they they tried to 
uh, speak fluently and not so bad words to the other people where, because they are in the internet or the life in the internet or in the recording. So uh, the the political culture was uh, uh, dropped up a few steps in uh, what's called uh, niveau. So it's uh, it's only one little project, but there is a uh, a process going on here in Salzburg. Yeah, I, I I like the discussion going on in 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 the chat. Uh, for example, so, some some people say, okay, maybe just the same people are going to talk online, uh, who are going to talk offline as well, or does it really open uh, new forms of access, and and and, and other people will, will join the discussion. And and I really like the the idea as well, uh, if I if I have understood correctly, uh, that that it, it it would be interesting if if people could really intervene maybe for a specific session uh, at at the city council meetings. So not just not just watch them and uh, maybe talk talk uh, among them about it, but. But but have really the the possibility the possibility to to intervene. What, what do you think, Gav? Would, would that be an option, or, or can you think of a format where the city council really opens up for 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 an hour for for discussion uh, with everybody, and and could this be in a live format? You know that would be welcomed uh, by me. The format that we have for council over here is it's a well it is very formal we we have let's take for instance the budget process the budget process includes a place where after we've spent a, a considerable amount of time putting together a plan for the budget and we're going through the last week or so of, of finalizing our approval of the budget at that point we have times where the public can uh, intervene. They are 15 minutes before each session where the public can give their concerns. But it's in a it's at a point where the budget has all but been decided and laid out and very difficult to make any changes. So a few years ago we started a process of consultation before the budget. It's not one that we do during our formal time but it is uh, more of a uh, town hall meeting where we open up a, a room where as many people who want to participate uh, can come as, as, as the room will hold. Now in, in, city, in the budget meetings we've, we've had a disappointing turnout. Very few people have shown up to, to meet to talk about the budget, but we haven't opened it up to online participation. And I think this would be a win because for for us, it's uh, well. Our the the practical side of this is that we're a, we're a car-based city. We're very very large uh, compared to our capital city. We have about the same population as our capital city, but we're 13 times the regional area of our city. So it's very large. Our city council chambers would only hold approximately 100 people of the 75,000 in the city. So the getting online participation I think is is critical. Now you have to accommodate the fact that some citizens don't have access to it. Unlike Sol Salzburg, it sounds like uh, you've got a great program in place for giving access. We don't have that and in fact uh, because we've got some areas that are very rural, uh, there are some areas without high-speed internet access at all still here. But if we can, if we can see that extending online access won't be for everybody. It still will enable more people to take part. And I think there's value. And I'll add one more reason why that's valuable. And that's that the demographics around voting in our country, in our city, well, the demographics start peaking about age 55. And if you look back to when the internet and when web access started happening, we're, uh, we're hitting a group of people who haven't been digital natives. People, the more, the most people who vote and take part in the in the process right now, are people who haven't had access to the internet and to the web their whole lives. So by extending the access online, we can open up participation to a to a whole new demographic. I think that's critical. Uh, 
maybe another question I would like to know. So you've got experience with, with live forms of participation and, and consultation processes uh, which are unsynchronous. Uh, so what, is, what is, in your opinion, the, um, the advantage of, of synchronous forms of, of interaction? Yeah. Well, we, I'll give as an example, uh, we went through a process we called the core services review this last year here in Prince George. And what that entailed was going back to the original reasons for having a city council and then assessing whether we were providing the mandated services and then whether the additional services the city provided were ones that were core to the functioning of a city. And of course, that speaks to the very nature of what a city is going to do. And so we, we, we were, it was incumbent on us to ensure that as many citizens participated in the process as was possible. There, were, there was uh, a consultation evening where uh, several hundred people showed up for a meeting. And there was value in hearing the conversations. But Ha the problem with event-based participation like that is over the course of a couple of hours, you can't deal with all the topics. Now, we were considering changes that were profound and could have changed the city dramatically. And you really can't get the feedback that you need over the course of a couple of hours. I'll contrast that with a previous process we did that was a combination of events, many, many events, and uh, an online participation. The online participation, we had hundreds and hundreds of different submissions for our city. And our events, rather than single large events, we took up the approach, uh, we called it kitchen table meetings, where we would send our staff out to meet with people where they wanted to meet. So meet with uh, clubs or meet with dinner groups, but have us go out to them. And so the combination of the, the dinner, the, uh, the kitchen meetings, the uh, heavy emphasis on the ability to submit online and a few events was much more effective than simple event-based, the traditional town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. So, so the kitchen meeting is a is an on-site meeting. Yes, it's where instead of them coming to us, we go to the citizens. Okay. And that might be in their coffee shop, or it might be in their home, or it might be in their church group, or wherever they wish to to host us. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine a, a kitchen meeting online as well? Or, or wouldn't that work? <laughs> Now that's an interesting thought. Uh, here in Prince George in 2014, the most uh, active social media is Facebook. And Facebook by its nature is a series of closed groups. It's, it's not like your Twitter or Google Plus. So I could imagine a uh, system where we were invited into a closed group to give a discussion that was very focused on on the topics they wanted yes I could see I could see how that happens we haven't done that but I could see how it could happen mm -hmm. it would be nice maybe to, to develop uh, what, what do you think Jochen? kitchen kitchen meeting online because I think so so uh, low threshold participation could could really contribute to yeah, to political debate I think uh, as a kitchen meeting is is very nice and you know, online or offline it's okay. Everything was uh, what is doing uh, good things to our democracy or to our uh, policies or our politics is, is is better than because we're in Austria we have a little crisis of our politics. Uh, we have lots of corruption. We have lots of uh, uh, mistrust from the people to the to the to the politicians and to the, the system of democracy. And I think uh, uh, kitchen meetings or where you have to talk to the people, to the, the, it's, uh, uh, it's okay. You, you, we have to do this because 
um, this is the only democracy we have. And uh, when the people are not participate or have uh, uh, other answers, they, they, we have a problem. And we his, uh, historical, we we know in Austria where where this path is leading to. So um, I I try to to think about such kitchen meetings for for the city council and and uh, these online meetings for 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 the people and, uh, and I, I, I will try it in, in the second half of, of 2014 because um, after election day they are, I think they are looking for, uh, for some some rooms or some 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 events where they can uh, the new uh, member of the city council can talk to the people can can talk with the people uh, or the people can talk uh, to them, so uh, I think we try it. Hmm. Interesting, and I think you hit uh, Jochen on the big issue, which is trust. Uh, I was reading uh, the largest PR firm in the world put out a a report a few about a month ago on, and they do it annually on the state of trust in of citizens. And it showed that consistently citizens trust business more than any level of government, but that uh, the level of trust in government uh, fluctuates up and down a little bit. Um, and I think that the, if you take that into Canada specifically, we see that the le highest level of trust in a recent poll showed highest level of trust is at the local government, then the provincial, and then the federal. So the more distant the order of government goes, from the citizen, the less trust they have. Uh, and the closer we get, the more trust. So if, uh, if we can get closer, if we can be more accountable and directly accountable, I think that trust go grows. Yeah, and I think trust is, uh, can be built by, by communicating. Yes. Yes, I agree, David. Yeah. Alistair. I'm just trying to follow the, the chat, which is uh, rolling along. I think uh, for Jochen and Garth, if you you can watch the recording later, and uh, you can check all the chat there, and maybe get <clears throat> get back to us. But um, Christina had uh, an interesting question a while back. Would you say that digital democracy is a positive development in regard to minorities' issues or not? Examples, either one of uh, you would like to comment on that. Oh. Uh, uh. I think we start in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say yes, and the reason I'll say yes is that it that uh, gives a way to amplify a voice that might not otherwise have been heard. So, if one person gives a mention, for instance, uh, today in Canada, <clears throat> it's uh, in my province, it's anti-bullying day. So we'll see that. Politicians, people, mm. or, uh, students will be wearing pink to show that they don't support bullying, that they're against bullying. Now, that might have been one person who was hurt uh, years ago, but they gave they gave their voice, and it was joined by others who said, "Yeah, that's that's a pretty good idea." It gives the opportunity to take an idea, to share it, and to aggregate interest around the idea. It's an opportunity. It doesn't guarantee that the minority voices will be heard, but it gives the opportunity and a much more effective way of getting out those those ideas than we've had outside of on of online participation. Actually, I'm maybe but I just like to follow up there, and we talked a little bit. I mean, minorities, but another major issue that came up. Um, this is from Halima in Uzbekistan, so we've got another continent involved here. Um, and she was asking a while back about how to get older people interested in sharing ideas in social media, and that's an issue over there. And uh, have you any examples of it? How do you get uh, the people who are often not online at all to be to become involved and aware of these opportunities? Yeah, I, I only can uh, talk for Austria. The, uh, the people uh, over 50 are called uh, here silver surfers, and they are the strongest growing group uh, using social networks and social 
social internet and uh, they like Facebook, they like Twitter and they like um, all uh, YouTube or all social networks. So I think it's only a matter of time when the, the older people are discovering this new, for them, new, new tools and I see no problem uh to they are using it like uh I am using this or, or David because the the tools are very simple and when you're interested uh in in using uh them you uh you can learn it in one hour and uh, a lot of people are trying and, and they have fun and they're looking for for uh social uh, connections and, and they find it in the social and the digital world and uh, I think in three, four, five years the the older people are using them like we do now. So I, I see no problem. In uh, in Canada, the we're on the crest of the baby boom. So we've had uh, we've had we've got a large proportion of of older people who are <coughs> who are retiring now, moving on and changing the demographics. But uh, in the words of uh, of my mother and father, it's uh, suddenly Facebook becomes useful when they want to see pictures of grandchildren. Yeah. Well, that, that may be the uh, the gateway drug to get into social media. But uh, once once my parents got on, they're very active on online, very connected, and like any tool, you just have to get involved and get comfortable with using it and once that's happened then you'll your personality can take over I think it's almost time to finish our uh, discussion I, I hope we could raise uh, we could have raised in interesting points for further consideration of thought uh, thank you very much Gav joining us from Canada at this very early time. Now it's already seven o'clock, so that's time for breakfast <laughs> now. <laughs> that's More or less, thank that's you, true. Uh, Alistair, thank you, uh, all the participants. And and I think what, what we're going to do now, we, we are not we, we are we are finishing officially, but but I think we, we are granting microphone rights to, to everybody be, because I think this is the idea as well of uh, openness and, and transparency and and participation <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah I don't know maybe with self moderation or maybe somebody uh, likes to continue uh, or to take over moderation um, yeah maybe a nice experiment just to, to mm -hmm. keep it open and, and everybody's free to to proceed and, and we will see what, what will develop. Well, bye to everybody. Yeah, thank you again. Thank you. If, if Jochen and uh, Garth can hang around for a few minutes, you're welcome. We're, we're going to go off record. I'm going to stop the recording in a second. And then, uh, well, it's, you're, you're never off record online. But at the same time, we can, uh, we can keep a little chat going. And uh, one or two people wanted to have the microphone, so we can let, as David said, we can we can get some comments uh, live. Uh, so we'll just continue talking. I'm going to finish the recording and say thanks to everyone for coming. Uh, I think the discussion will continue in various ways. You'll get you'll get uh, links to the recording of this webinar, and you're welcome to send it wherever you like as an example of uh, yeah some inspiring examples. Loads of stuff in the chat some great links there and people have made contact with each other in different countries which is really nice so um yeah i will now turn off